before I start talking about chemical bonds, I want to make sure that you understand what a valence electron is and a valence shell. Um, if you don't, go back and look at that. Essentially, atoms, elements, react with each other because they don't have a full outer shell. They want eight electrons on the outer shell, every shell except for the first one. And if they don't have that, they go seek out eight. If you're on the left hand side, you have one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons on the outer shell. So giving up one will allow you to bond. Grabbing one will allow you to bond. These guys over here are happy as a clam because they have eight and they are stable and inert, as we call them. Now, when we're talking about bonds, we're talking usually about a, well, there's two different ways of talking about bonds. One is um, an electron cloud, where the electrons are, they're these little things, little particles waves, things, we don't know where they are, when they are, how long they, it's a cloud. And um, what happens is that these, this electron cloud in a covalent bond, it's literally shared between um, the different atoms. So Different examples of a covalent bond are here. So you have hydrogen, they share with each other. That's a covalent bond. You're sharing the electrons with each other. Oxygen, this is a covalent bond. You're sharing the electrons with each other. Methane, carbon is a tramp. Carbon is a very agreeable chap. It gets along with everybody. It shares its electron with everybody. So there's one big cloud that just kind of goes through all of this. And the cloud, you know, takes kind of this shape. This is kind of the idea of that. That's the, the shape the cloud takes on. Now, bonds, like most things, are on a spectrum. And this share and share a life deal works out beautifully if you've got a bunch of agreeable chaps working with you. Um, it does not if you don't. And if you're working with bullies, then you don't. Let's talk about where we find the bullies. Over here, on the right-hand side of the periodic table, the oxygen, the fluorine, the chlorine, the sulfur, those kinds of things over here, those are the bullies. Oxygen is quite a big bully maybe the biggest bully of them all that we care about in biology. And they're bullies because they only need a couple of shells. They're big molecules. They almost have a full shell. And so there's a big, strong desire to grab just two more and be done. So oxygen is a bully. So it doesn't, unlike carbon, Oxygen does not share and share alike. Instead, oxygen pulls the electron cloud towards the oxygen. So the electron is going to spend a little more time on the part of the oxygen than it is on the part of the hydrogen. So it's going to be a little more because the electron is negatively charged. The electron's going to spend a little more time over here, so this is going to be slightly negatively charged on that side. And 
because it's slightly negatively charged, it is now relatively positive over on the other side, right? And that makes this just a little magnetic slash sticky slash this is what makes water special. So we're going to talk about that later. Different video. But this is a polar covalent bond. So this is polar covalent because oxygen is a bully and it's pulling the electrons towards it. Now oxygen is a bully. Chlorine is, is a bigger bully. Oxygen pulls the electron towards it, but it doesn't steal it outright. Chlorine steals it. Chlorine just goes, mine. And the poor little sodium says, okay. And so now we have chlorine that has literally an extra electron and sodium that is literally lacking one. And now chlorine, because of the extra electron, which is negatively charged, chlorine is now negatively charged. And because chlorine is now negatively charged, chlorine now attracts things that are positively charged. So chlorine attracts the sodium. So it's not a sharing of electron cloud, it's an attraction of the charge that binds those two together. Why does this matter? This matters because it changes characteristics. For example, solubility characteristics. So sodium chloride, for example, um, because of that negative and positive charge, um, there is an attack possible by something else that is charged that can then dissolve the sodium chloride, for example, and take it apart. So this is why this matters. The last bond that I'm going to mention, just for completeness sake, it's not actually really a bond. All the other bonds that we talked about were in tra molecular bonds within the molecule, within the compound on the part of sodium chloride. This is intermolecular. It's between the molecules. And it's a bond. It's basically just a measure of, think of it as a measure of stickiness. Uh, the hydrogen bond is a, is a very weak bond. Um, and the strength of the hydrogen bond is in, in the amount of them. Um, it's what gives water the special properties. Um, And it's very important for life, but it's a very weak bond, but very important. 